Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni Guzman, and our topic for today is competing for the arithmetic means. The first and the last term of the finite arithmetic sequence are called arithmetic extremes, and the term in between are called arithmetic means. So let us consider this example. In the sequence 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24, find its arithmetic means. Again, the numbers 4 and 24 are what we call arithmetic extreme. So we can rewrite this one as arithmetic extremes. Okay, and therefore the numbers 8, 12, 16, and 20 are what we call arithmetic means. The arithmetic mean between two numbers is sometimes called the average of two numbers. If more than one arithmetic means will be inserted between two arithmetic extremes, the formula for D or the common difference is equal to a sub n minus a sub k all over n minus k. Let's recall from our previous lesson that a sub n is the second term mentioned in the problem, while a sub k is the first term mentioned in the given problem. So let us consider the problem number one. So what is the arithmetic mean between 10 and 24? Now we have only two numbers, so therefore to get our arithmetic means, this is simply the average of 10 and 24. So, simply add 10 and 24 divided by 2. So, this is equal to 34 all over 2. So, we have arithmetic mean is equal to 17. So, again, to double check our answer, we have 10, comma, blank, and 24. So, it means that, okay, if we will insert 17 here, okay, the difference between 10 and 17 is the same as the difference of 17 and 24. So let's double check. 17 minus 10 is equal to 7, and 24 minus 17 is equal to 7. So therefore, the arithmetic mean is 17. Let us consider problem number 2. Insert. 3 arithmetic means between 8 and 16. Notice that we have more than one arithmetic mean between 8 and 16. So let's illustrate this one first. So we have 8, comma, blank, blank, and blank, and 16. Notice that the, these three blanks represents the arithmetic means between 8 and 16. Observe that our 8 is our first term, then we have second term, third term, fourth term, and the fifth term. Okay, next, since we have here more than one arithmetic mean between 8 and 16, we will use the formula D is equal to A sub N minus A sub K all over n minus k, wherein a sub n is actually the second term mentioned in the problem, which is 16. So it follows that our a sub n is equal to 16, it happens that this is our fifth term. So therefore, our n is equal to 5. Next, we have our a sub k. So this is the first term mentioned in the problem, which is actually 8. And observe that, based from our illustration, 8 is our first term. So it means that k is equal to 1. Now that we know the value of a sub n, a sub k, n and k, so we can now determine the common difference. So d is equal to a sub n, minus a sub k all over n minus k. 
So, a sub n is equal to 16 minus 8 all over 5 minus 1. So, we have here 8 all over 4. So, the difference or I mean the quotient is equal to 2. So, now to get our a sub 2, it means that is a sub 1 plus the common difference. So, let's substitute a sub 1 is equal to 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Next, a sub 3 is equal to your a sub 2 plus the common difference. a sub 2 is equal to 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. Next, a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 plus the common difference. Let's substitute. a sub 3 is equal to 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. So, meaning to say, the 3 arithmetic means between the arithmetic extremes 8 and 16 are 12, uh, 10, 12, and 14. Let's have third problem. Find the missing terms of the arithmetic sequence blah, 6, blah, blah, and 30. Before we solve this, let's illustrate. The first block is our a sub 1. Then 6 is our a sub 2. Then we have a sub 3, block. Then we have a sub 4, comma, and a sub 5. Since we have more than one arithmetic means that we need to insert between our arithmetic extremes, we will use the formula D is equal to a sub n minus a sub k all over n minus k. Observe that, okay, our a sub n, which is equal to 30. So, this is our fifth term. So, it follows that n is equal to 5. Next, our a sub k is equal to 6. And this is our second term. So, it follows that our k is equal to 2. Okay? Now that we know the value of a sub n, a sub k, n and k, therefore, we can find out the common difference. So, d is equal to a sub n minus a sub k all over n minus k. Substitute. So, we have 30 minus 6 all over 5 minus 2. So, we have 24 all over 3 is equal to 8. So, this is your common difference. Now, to get our first term, so that is actually a sub 2 minus the common difference. So, a sub 2 is equal to 6 minus the common difference of 8. This is equal to negative 2. Next, moving to a sub 3, a sub 3 is your a sub 2 plus the common difference. So, we have a sub 2 is 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. Next, a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 plus your common difference of 8. So, we have 14 plus 8 is equal to 22. So, therefore, the missing terms are negative 2, 14, and 22 respectively. So, let's have fourth problem. Insert two arithmetic means between square root of 2 and 4 square root of 2. So, before we solve this, let's illustrate first the problem. So, we have square root of 2, okay, then blank, blank, and then we have 4 square root of 2. Okay, observe that square root of 2 is our a sub 1. Then we have a sub 2, then we have a sub 3, and a sub 4. And since we will insert more than one arithmetic means, then we will use the formula, common difference is a 
sub n minus a sub k all over n minus k. Observe that our a sub n is equal to, okay, a sub 4. So, it follows that our n is equal to 4. Okay? So, the value of a sub n is equal to 4 square root of 2. Next. Okay. So, square root of 2 is our first term. Okay? So, this is our a sub k. So, this is our first term. So, our k is equal to 1. Now, we know the value of a sub n, a sub k, n and k. Then, the common difference is equal to a sub n minus a sub k all over n minus k. So, let's substitute. So, a sub n is equal to 4 square root of 2 minus square root of 2 all over 4 minus 1. So we have 3 square root of 2 all over 3. Or I can factor out 3 and 3. So we have square root of 2. Okay. Now I know the value of D which is equal to square root of 2. Therefore, I can find now the second term which is first term plus the common difference. So, a sub 1 is equal to square root of 2 plus square root of 2. So, we have 2 square root of 2. Next, a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2 plus the common difference. So, we have 2 square root of 2 plus square root of 2. So, this is equal to 3 square root of 2. So, therefore, the arithmetic means are 2 square root of 2 and 3 square root of 2. So, let us move on now to the fifth problem. If 3 arithmetic means are inserted between 11 and 39, then what is the second arithmetic mean? So, again, let's try to illustrate our problem. So, we have 11, then comma or blank, 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 then we have 39. So, our first term, or a sub 1, is equal to 11. Then we have a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and our fifth term is 39. So, again, so our a sub n is equal to a sub 5, so it follows that n is equal to 5. By the way, a, a sub n is equal to 39. Also, 11 is our first term. So this represents our okay, a sub k. So this is our first term or a sub 1. So it follows that k is equal to 1. So, let's look now for the common difference in the formula of D is equal to A sub N minus A sub K all over N minus 1. So, we have A sub N is equal to 39 minus 11 all over 5 minus 1. So, we have 28 all over Four. So, the common difference is equal to 7. Now that we know the common difference, let's look for our second term. So, we have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus the common difference. So, we have 11 plus 7 equals 18. Okay? So, to double check our answer, let's look for a sub 3. a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2 plus the common difference. So, we have 18 plus 7 is equal to 25. Next, 
a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 plus the common difference, so we have 25 plus 7 equals 32. Now to verify our answer, let's have a sub 5. So we have a sub 5 is equal to a sub 4 plus the common difference, so we have 32 plus 7 equals 39. Okay? Since we are only looking for the second term, therefore, the second arithmetic mean is 18. 